Now we have uh, talked about in many occasions the evolution of a refinery based on of course the demands for the products all the way from a one pot uh, distillation refinery or we can call it a separation refinery just to make kerosene for the lamps for lighting. Now it's, it's widely considered and, and claimed that that very process saved the whales from extinction because instead of now using whale oil in, in lamps, one could use kerosene without much smoke and the, the night or the light to actually uh, let people uh, extend the daylight in essence. Of course, with the electric uh, light, now kerosene was not demanded. But as you know, as we've talked about before, the demand for another fuel or gasoline was increasing. So from separation or distillation refinery, we went to the thermal refinery to make more gasoline for the increasing number of automobiles. And of course, the, uh, the lubricating oil that is needed in these engines. So the thermal refinery uh, performed quite well up until the Second World War to use uh, just heat to make the chemical changes that are needed to change the composition of the crude oil to fit with the product demand in essence. With the Second World War uh, raging with the demand for high performance fuels, the catalytic processes were introduced. So we are in the, in the catalytic refinery taking over from the thermal refinery and the catalytic refinery contained, uh, continued, of course, after the Second World War. Uh, an interesting historical note, uh, the companies, oil companies that were competing before the Second World War in the United States and, and in uh, Western Europe got together to develop these uh, catalytic, many of these catalytic processes that are still used today in an effort, obviously, to uh, develop uh, more um, uh, powerful fuels for the war effort. So that is a very interesting era uh, in the history of petroleum refining, where competition turns into uh, uh, collaboration uh, to, to make, uh, of course, uh, more powerful fuels for the more powerful war machine. Until uh, the end of the century, obviously, this trend continued. And the, the next stage is referred in some text as the end of the century recover, uh, refinery, where the focus now is really on the very heavy end. Because as we're using crude oil in the marketplace, the crude oil available for becoming or, or for refining becomes heavier. So when you do the distillation, there is a huge amount of vacuum distillation resid that is separated. So the end of the century refinery focuses on treating these heavy ends, essentially hydroprocessing, using different reactor configurations, using essentially uh, the chemistry, chemical modeling to determine the reaction chemistry, kinetics, for a more optimum conversion of these very heavy ends, the most challenging parts of the crude oil to be converted into the light distillates. So on one hand, we have an increasing demand for uh, lighter fuels like gasoline, diesel, jet fuel. And on the other hand, we do have a crude oil base that is getting increasingly heavier and dirtier. So the end of the century uh, refinery focused on treating and hydro-treating these heavy ends to make the, the lighter and cleaner products. As we have mentioned at the beginning of, of this course, there is a new trend that is the hydrofracking to make essentially to produce shale gas. But there is a liquid byproduct and uh, it won't be uh, too long before uh, hydrofracking is used to produce oil also. So in the 21st century, we may see yet another significant change in the refinery scheme 
to incorporate shale oil that is produced by hydro fracking into the refinery to be refined into the mix of the fuels and materials that are needed uh, in the marketplace.